first step in formation of urine is ultrafiltration of plasma from glomerular capillaries into the tubules. The rate at which there is filtration of plasma at the level of the glomerular capillaries is known as glomerular filtration rate and it is normally 125 ml per minute or if expressed in terms of per day then it is 180 liters per day. Normally approximately 700 ml of plasma flows into the renal vessels. So if we calculate that how much of this uh, plasma is getting filtered in terms of fraction, we need to divide the glomerular filtration rate divided by the renal plasma flow. So it will be 125 uh, ml per minute divided by 700 ml per minute is equal to, it comes to approximately 20%. So that means that 20% of plasma which enters into the renal vessels gets filtered. But what are the factors which determine that how much of this plasma will filter? Well, there are two things. One is the driving forces across the capillary and second is the characteristics of the capillary that how much it is permeable and how much is its surface area. Okay, so first let's discuss what are these forces. Well, you might uh, remember the forces which uh, drive the movement of the water across a capillary. Basically, these are hydrostatic pressures and the oncotic pressure. Where we say that hydrostatic pressure is the push force that is moves water away from it and the oncotic pressure is the pull force that is pulls water towards it, isn't it? So, here also these forces operate. So, these forces are present on either side of the capillary wall that is in the capillaries and in the Bowman's capsule. So there is hydrostatic pressure of the capillary which is due to the fluid which is uh, present in the capillary. Then there is oncotic pressure in the capillary which is due to the plasma proteins which are there. Then there is uh, hydrostatic pressure in the tubules uh, or we can say Bowman's space uh, because of the filtered fluid isn't it and then there is oncotic pressure in the tubules or in the Bowman's space which obviously will not be much or we can say it is zero because plasma proteins are not filtered. So among these which are the forces which promote filtration and which are the forces which oppose filtration. So for determining this you can apply your uh, knowledge about hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure. So see hydrostatic pressure of the glomerulus will, is a push force so it will be the force promoting filtration. Then oncotic pressure of the tubules uh, or oncotic pressure of the Bowman space is the pull force which will again pull water towards the tubule. So again it is a force promoting filtration. Then oncotic pressure of the capillaries is a force opposing filtration and also hydrostatic pressure of the tubules is a force opposing filtration. So how much is the net driving force? Well, you see now by subtracting the forces opposing filtration from that of forces promoting filtration, we can determine the effective filtration pressure or EFP. So we will just do that and uh, for that we need to know the actual values of these forces. So hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries is 60 millimeter mercury, then uh, oncotic pressure in the tubules is 0 since there are no proteins in the uh, tubule. Then hydrostatic pressure in the tubules is 18 millimeter mercury while the oncotic pressure in the capillaries is 32 millimeter mercury. So we will just add this 18 plus 32 is equal to 50 millimeter mercury. So on subtracting it comes to 10 millimeter mercury. So the effective filtration pressure is 10 millimeter mercury. So that is the net driving force for filtration. Okay, now before we proceed just remember one thing here that uh, as filtration goes on through the capillary what happens these values of oncotic pressure change along the length of the capillaries. So here on the afferent arterial end the oncotic pressure is little less compared to those in the efferent arteriolar end of the capillary because as filtration proceeds the oncotic pressure will rise isn't it due to the increase in the concentration of the proteins. So obviously this effective filtration pressure also changes along the length of the capillary. So the filtration is also different along the length of the capillary, isn't it? But to determine that how much is the effective filtration pressure, we actually take a mean values along the length of the capillary. So this calculation is based on that. Okay. 
So these are the forces which drive glomerular filtration. Now there is second factor as we talked about in the beginning that uh, the characteristics of the capillaries that how much is it permeability and how much is the surface area of the capillaries. Because see if there is a capillary say which is very less permeable what will happen? The force will not be very effective for filtration. But in case of uh, glomerular capillaries this permeability or what we call as hydraulic conductivity is quite high. So obviously if the permeability is high filtration will be more and uh, secondly the surface area of the capillary. If surface area is very less then the filtration will be less. So you know that uh, glomerular capillaries is basically a bunch of the capillaries isn't it. So this causes increase in the surface area of the capillaries. So these characteristics of the capillaries are uh, combined together in a coefficient known as filtration coefficient. So we can say that GFR is equal to effective filtration pressure into filtration coefficient. So we saw that effective filtration pressure is 10 millimeter mercury and this filtration coefficient is about uh, 12.5 ml per minute per millimeter mercury. So if we calculate it comes to 125 ml per minute of GFR. Okay, so what is the significance of knowing all this? See this aspect uh, that is the filtration coefficient is normally not used for day to day regulation of the GFR. It is by changing these forces, this effective filtration pressure that body regulates GFR which will be a subject of another video perhaps. However, there are certain diseases which affect this particular filtration coefficient uh, like in case of uncontrolled hypertension or diabetes there is basically thickening of the glomerular capillary membrane and there is loss of this permeability. Also due to the destruction of the capillaries there is loss of the surface area. So in these diseases what will happen? Over a long term if they are uncontrolled there will be decrease in the glomerular filtration rate which will ultimately affect the excretion of the waste products. So that's all regarding the factors that determine the GFR. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.